so I went home and I took my son for 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 clinic that's when the now the doctor was like the surgery didn't the surgery failed and he was very nervous to tell me that he it did didn't come out the way he expected so he had to redo it uh, this time he had to remove some parts from the cheek of my son and press it to the penis service of the penis so that he can get an area where the the, the urine will come to hi guys and welcome back to mommy tales i'm happy to have you here in case you're new here my name is marianne and on this channel i share inspiring stories from fellow moms fellow women sometimes i feature dads who have all gone through experiences in their lives that we can all learn from and that's exactly what we'll be doing today we'll be learning um about hypospadias which basically in layman's language it's when your son or a boy is born with a birth defect in his penis and that's the experience that evelyn went through actually as i was interviewing her i personally was learning a lot because i'm a mom of two boys so there was a lot for me to learn from her and i'm hoping the experience will be the same for you so let me not talk too much let's just hear it directly from evelyn my name is evelyn and i'm a mother to one son he is clarence austin Gadesha. He's now 10 years old. I thank God for him and for his life. When I was pregnant in the year 2010, uh, I gave birth to him in April 2010. And that is when the doctor, the pediatrician in uh, the hospital told me after he is two years, I should see a pediatrician. So when the journey started, I took him to clinic. I had nothing in fear. I was just innocent mother. I was lacing him well. He was growing up well. So when we got to two years, I went to see a pediatrician in Nyeri. That's when the doctor told me that he has a condition called hypospadias. And being a new mo young mother, he, I didn't know what hypospadias was, so I was like, it is like any other surgery that one can go get treated and go home. So we started the journey of seeing the pediatrician. He booked us for the surgery. He also realized he has undecided testes. So the first surgery was that he, he brought down the, un, the undecided testes that was up so that so that the the boy can be okay so we were through with that so he told me to go after six months for the next surgery so the the surgery was so costly i had to involve some friends so that i'm able to to do the surgery so we went after six months and uh, the doctor started the journey of treating uh, the hypospadias. The hypospadia, those who don't know, it's the whole of the, the, the whole of the penis is either at the middle or beneath, the, the, between the testes or along the, 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 the penis itself. So, we went the 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 case for my son the 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 p of the the whole of the penis was at the middle of the testes so it was very hard for him to pull the line to the tip so he told me he is going to start the the process we went and he did the test uh, he did the surgery that took me about two hours to wait for my son in the in theatre. It was not an easy thing because my son was even uh, uh, crying because he had he had not to eat at night because of the the following day surgery. So when the doctor the surgeon came, he took him to theatre and told me he, I will wait for him for two hours. 
so we had to wait for two hours so that he get out of the theater it was not easy to wait for two hours it was like taking a whole year waiting for someone it was so nervous and i was so scared i might lose my son in the process but i was just praying to god that he'll come back to me so the, the my son went and he was brought back to the ward by the nurses and i was very happy then after that when I was told to wait for the, the, the area that was surgeoned to heal for around 14 days. So the doctor told me he had to circumcise my son so that the process will, the procedure was okay. So I waited for the five days for, for them to undress my son and then the rest of the days so that the hearing part of it can take over. So when uh, we were out of uh, uh, the hospital after 14 days, the, the surgeon gave me a, a clinic that was to, to go and verify if the surgery is okay, was successful or had failed. So me, I went back to work to Nairobi and I left my son with my mom so that he can be taking him for clinics. So when the first day for the clinic I told my mom to, to, to tell me the day so that I can take him personally so that I know what happened to my son during the surgery. So I went home when doctors confirm, the doctor confirmed the dates, so I went home and I took my son for, 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 for clinic. That's when the now the doctor was like the surgery didn't, the surgery failed, and he was very nervous to tell me that he it did didn't come out the way he expected. I was so down being a, 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 a single mom, knowing very well I had no other money to take my son to hospital. So my mind was croaking that, such that I cried throughout the night asking God so many questions because I thought that was the last surgery that my, my son would add a goal. So I asked the doctor what will happen next. That's when the doctor told me I should go back after six months for another surgery. I was not ready for it because I thought the money that I, that I, I was having, I used it for the surgery and I didn't have any other amount to, for such cases. So when I went back to Nairobi, I consulted my friends. That's when we, we agreed I can go and see a surgeon in Kenyatta to see if the surgery can be done nearer where I was. So we went, I went to Kenyatta and there is a doctor who helped me to get the pediatrician surgeon and I was booked in for surgeries in Kenyatta. So I started my journey with clinics in Kenyatta. We used to go on Thursdays at you must be there by 8 so that by 11 you are done. If you are not, you won't make it by 8. You'll get so many people uh, lining up for clinic and you won't be attended because at 11 doc, the, the next shift will take over. So I started my journey in Kenyatta and when that's when I was booked in for theatre and I was taken for another surgery. My son was taken for another surgery. And I thank God that even in Kenyatta, where people don't, didn't get space for their kids to get to, to the ward, my God intervened. And we went for the first time and we got a bed. And the following day, my son was taken. In fact, he was taken being the first person in theater. I was so happy that now my journey has started and that my son will be well. But the the, the good thing with the, the, the Kenyatta surgeon, he explained to me what is hypospadias and what I am expecting from the surgeries. So he explained that the, the surgery may fail or may, the surgery may, may, may be successful. So I was just praying God. Even I had a group that we used to pray so that my son can get well. So we went to Kenyatta and, and uh, my son was booked for theater and 
he went and when uh, the he came out we wait i waited for like one and a half hours and he came back and i was very happy to see him back because he was so tiny such that i was even fearing for him to go for theater because of this you, you hear people say once someone goes to theater they don't come back but my son my god gave me my son back and i was a very happy woman so after my son was out of theater we had to wait for the surgeon to come around the ward so that he give us a report that's when he told me the uh, the the surgery has failed because of the previous circumcision that was made because the circumcision was supposed to be done on the third surgery not the first surgery of the hypospadias. I was like, now down again because now the process has restarted and being a mother, you know, and you, ha you, have, you are working and you don't know if your employer will even understand the condition or what you are charging people because people even don't understand what this what is this condition so the i was minding even my business because the the employer that i was with has given me so much permission and i was like will he understand that i'll bring back my son again for surgery so that's when we were told to after we, had dis we were discharged on the fifth day and we were told to go for clinic after three weeks and we went for clinic and uh, the doctors there they were so encouraging they were telling telling me that he'll be okay but i have to be patient it's not an easy thing so i was just praying and fasting for my son to get the light thing the light surgeon and the light way of doing it so that he can be well so he told us that we should go back after six months after the first clinic we go back after six months so that we can get the surgery again so after six months of waiting we i went back to kenyatta and uh, the my son was booked for surgery and he went and uh, the, the 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 surgeon there are three process of these hypospadias the the surgeon has to prepare the way for the for the the, the urine the urethral line so that the urine can come through well so with the, that way the that process of preparing the surface is that was getting tricky that is where the problem was because the, he was circumcised all, already so he had to redo it uh, this time he had to remove some parts from the cheek of my son and press it to the penis surface of the penis so that he can get an area where the the, the urine will come to through to so it was not an easy process my son was uh, we took I took my son for surgery and he was booked in and he went one and a half hours and he came back well so when uh, he came back and I was told the surgery was okay the surgery was successful so I was a very happy ma mother knowing we have remained with just one surgery so that he can get well so we went back home and my son was very happy also he was eating well I was told to give him a lot of fruit especially water you, he was supposed to take a lot of water so that the process the line the line of the urine can maintain the, the the way it should be so when we went back home i was a very happy mother and we stayed for six months then we we went back to Kenyatta Hospital for the last surgery. So when we were booked in for the last surgery, I had to pray that God will make a way for him because now they had to cross the service so that the, the line of the urethral line can go to the tip of the penis. So they went and they crossed the, 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 the service and when, when my son was still there, he was inserted a catheter that he was to use for 14 more days. 
so i waited for 14 more days so that the right he can't interfere with the line so that it can heal so well such that when we go home it won't bring infection or fistula so when we we were discharged i was a very happy mother that now i'm through with the surgeries of my son and my son will go to school very well without interference so in fact when we were doing all these surgeries i would take my son back to school because i never wanted him to be lonely or to feel as if he's he's neglected so that also helped him so that he mingled with other students and other children and in fact he used to perform very well in fact one day he became number seven out of 27 for two weeks classes and i was I was so grateful to God. So we went back to Kenyatta for the final surgery, that is to close the hypospadias line so that my son can now release the, the urine very well. So we were booked in and the surgeon took over for two hours. He told me this one will take two hours because it's a long procedure. So my, my son was prepared by the nurses in the ward and I would cry for him to come back to me because he was very weak and uh, I would fear losing him. So he went to surge, to surge for theater and, the, and they crossed the line and the doctor brought my son back using a catheter that is uh, inserted direct to the penis. So the doctor told me to take care of the, the, the catheter so that he doesn't interfere with it. So after we are, uh, we are done with five days, the dressing was removed, he was remained with the catheter so that the service can also create itself very well so that the discharge can come out at the tip. So we waited for the 14 days and the, the the surgeon came and removed the catheter and we were discharged back home so when we went back home i realized my son would would urinate using a very tiny uh, stripe of 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 the urine and i was like uh is he going to to be like that the whole of his time because I always see people splash urine while discharging urine so I was very cautious and when we went back for 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 clinic after one week we were told to go to clinic after one week so when I went back for clinic I, I explained to the surgeon what was happening to my son and I was not happy with the kind of the urine that he's discharging it was very tiny so he told me to buy some infection medicines he wrote for me and also i realized at the penis of my son there was a, a a boil that was forming and i also asked him why was the boil forming he told me he has never seen such kind of case of having a boil forming after the surgery so uh, he was also worried and he told me if i i see anything that is suspicious i take him to the hospital so we went back home i remember it was on a thursday and i had uh, borrowed permission from my employer so that i can take him to hospital so uh, we went back we went back home and my uh, my son took a lot of fluid that day because i was cautious so that the line cannot block because of the infection so my we we ate in the evening and we went back home when we went back home we uh, he ate very well and he was discharging urine tiny urine and i was like maybe this is a process it will come to end so we went to sleep at around 10 so during night hours my son would wake me up when he want to 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 go for short call so that day he told me he want to go for short call i used to use um, uh, 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 i used to take him to switch on and take him to the toilet so when we 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 woke up he told me mom so I was like, what? 
yes mkojo haitoki i was just nervous i didn't know what to do it was at middle of the night the 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 urine system now has totally blocked he had nowhere to release himself and his stomach all his bladder was full of water and the, the the fluid that i gave him during the day it was not easy for me i walked up i opened all the doors in my house i was like why me again oh god why me why my son are we going to go back to the to the to the hospital will my employer understand me will the people understand me because most of the time people used to come and visit me they used to ask me is this the last one i hope it is the last one and i want to encourage people not always tell a patient about the last thing because you don't know what that person is undergoing through because i knew the processes were three and when you come and tell me i hope this is the last one you will you you killed you in fact you can kill someone even motivation of taking care of the kid or the patient so it's good to ask the patient to be uh, the the person to be just patient for the god's time that that is what i would encourage mothers and uh, others who goes to hospital to visit others never say this is the i hope this is this is the last time just tell how we are praying to god that this process can get over because most of my friends i used to tell them this is my last and in fact it was my first and because i don't want them to see as if i want you know when you're sick people maybe they they seek sympathy me i never wanted a lot of sympathy because i, I wanted my son to be well and that this case closed so when you ask somebody this is the last i was imagine you are tired of coming to see me you are tired of my son being sick and i was i was persuaded by god that i would take him through um, until he's well so i was determined that even if it take a decade my son will be well because my god reigns so when he got sick again i was like i won't tell anybody now that i'm in hospital so i cried alone I called my neighbor to take me to hospital. In fact, he was very responsive. I used uh, my my phone to call him direct. Even I never minded about his wife, who was also so understanding that I uh, I I didn't have credit. So my imagination was just to use di direct his phone so that we discuss what we were discussing. So I used the phone, and he came. He told me. So he he is not able to to urinate. Yes, please get ready and make sure you carry some clothes. I was like I'm ready to go to hospital. So he came after that minute, and we went to Kenyatta Hospital. He's a good friend of mine, and I respect him for that because he saved my son's life. We went at night. He was not even tired for us. He waited for us to get admitted. The admission that took us like. Two hours to be admitted in Kenyatta. That was a total submission from him, and I thank God for him. He came with a friend, and I just appreciate them. The, when we went to Kenyatta, we went to Kashwati, the main emergency site. We went to Kashwati. We were received so well, especially when the nurses realized that my son had the bladder was full and is unable to discharge the urine. They were very responsive, and it was made an emergency. So the doctor that was in charge that night was told to take my case very urgent. So we went through very well. In a span of that minute, uh, 20 seconds, we were in a in a special room where now the, the the doctor that was in charge, I talked to him. I told him the line, the urethral line, has already blocked, so he should not insert those syringe or those the those those those, those suprapubic catheters. So the catheters so that because my son was training to even use them so i told him to contact my surgeon 
at that time who he contacted and I was very happy because he was very responsive and he told me he told him what to do so in a span of five minutes the surgeon the the doctor that was in charge came and he came with a syringe uh, with a with a urine bag and he inserted the syringe direct to the bladder and my son started discharging the urine that was a relief for me because I could see now the urine coming out from the bladder and my son was like now that he was crying so hard such that I was feeling for him and the and my friends were happy they were said finally God has come through for us so we were told we won't go back home we will have to wait for the surgeon so that the following day we can be taken to the theater again. Remember, this is after two weeks after my son was taken to theater. I was like, now, theater again. It is a process. And it is a very tiring process. If you are, you are the you are kind of a mother or you are kind of a person that get weary so fast, you can ignore everything because you have to be there for the patient. So we went, we were taken to the ward and my son was uh, booked for theater the following day. So it was not that emergency because the, the urine was discharging using the syringe and the, and the urine bag that we were given at night. So I was just happy because the drops were dripping to the to the urine bag so when he was taken back to the theater i thought they were going to rectify now the line so after the 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 surgeon the, the surgery the surgeon was came he told me that uh, he won't do the the repair because the repair is fresh it won't work so he told me he's going to insert the suprapubic catheter direct to the bladder so that my son can be able to discharge urine for the time being until six months so i was like we had to carry the suprapubic catheter with together with the urine bag for six months it was a very shameful thing but i never minded because it was my son so after this he was taken to theater he came back with the suprapubic catheter where he was discharging urine direct and that car catheter it's a very sensitive catheter in case you get someone with such a kind of a catheter because the infections are many once you don't take water that one it needs just fresh water it doesn't need uh, it doesn't need the juice or the milk or the tea you have to tell your son or the patient to take fresh water fresh water so that the discharge of the the urine can come well through that suprapubic it was not an easy process telling my son now you'll be taking plain water he used to take around three four liters per day so that he can clear the bladder and the urine uh, the suprapubic catheter won't block because once it's blocked you have to go back to a doctor who knows how to unblock it it was a process so after we were discharged home i had to buy every day i used to buy urine bag reason by reason being remember there was a ball i was talking about during my last visit to the clinic that ball busted once it busted, some urine used to discharge through that line, the, the line that that, uh, that boil created. So the doctors in Kenyatta told me, do you want your son to go back to school or do you want him to stay at home? I told him he normally goes to school, so I would love him to go back to school. He told me then we can be crossing the suprapubic he can also be using the, the line that the, the boil created to discharge urine. At night, you close it so that the urine can go through the urine bag. And I was very happy that God created such a thing because it was shameful for my son. It was shameful for my son going carrying the urine bag. So. We went back home, I was very happy, I was shown how to, to, to cross the, the suprapubic so that he can go back to school. But I asked him, 
can we be crossing or can you be using the pampas you know once you direct that suprapubic to the pampas the urine will drop just to the pampas then you change the pampas but he was like no mom i want to urinate using that right yani that those holes that were created so i was like it's okay the way you want it i won't push you so i used to go to school i i went to school and i talked to the teacher in, the teacher the class teacher i told her because my son has a an issue please be taking care of him because when he was discharging urine some urine would, would come to the trouser so i used to pack some four trousers for him so that once he de, he goes for a short call he can change yani the way you you normally change the diapers so the teacher was very cooperative he told me, she told me she when will give him a special toilet because you know some the way the kids would be anxious to know why is he discharging urine using the splashes from the the boil so uh, the teacher was very very cooperative and i was very happy for her she was she used even to clean the the the, the trousers for my son when i was getting him back at four the the trousers were just wet but very clean i'm very happy for that teacher may god bless him so once we were that that journey wasn't easy because once now my son got used to crossing the catheter and using the the urine bag at night so during during sundays i used to not go to church because we had to stay at home so that he can discharge the urine using the urine bag so the process took us on for six months so that is the time now my friends came in uh when my boss called me to his office and he told me now he used to call me eve eve you've done your part can community come in because now your son has gone through so much and we think you've done your part and i told him me what i have I've got finished the the cash I had and I don't know any other hospital ca that can take over the case so he he to he asked the his personal assistant to come to the office he told him you judge he was judge judge you help Eve to get a hospital in India so that this case can be over she has tried her best she started in Nyeri now she is in Nairobi and we can't see any change can we try somewhere else i was like god has come through for me so he was assigned a duty to to look for about four hospitals that take care of hypospadias case and we we go and sit down and see the best hospital we can take my son it was not easy so we took two weeks i remember two weeks getting the quotations from all the hospitals we got a hospital in spain two in india and uh, and it wasn't easy the quotations were so big in fact i was like will i ever get this kind of money to take my son for treatment so we settled with one hospital in india that is called um, mithil hospital that deals with the, the hypospadias cases so because it is a foundation that takes care of hypospadias cases i felt as a mother that is the best hospital because every day in and out they are just dealing with hypospadias so we might not get any charge from them so we asked for the quotation and they gave us a quotation of 2 million for the because they asked for the pictures of the way he was urinating the way he was brushing the 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 urine even through the 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 boil part of the, the line that was created by the boil and the surgeon told me he will just take two surgeries for him to to recover i was a very happy mother now even happy and nervous because i have to get finances and i have to take my son for treatment and now i have to get another walk or list because that is starting again we had finished now we are coming back again for treatment 
So when we talked to the surgeon in India, he gave us a date. Then we organized on how we can get the money. We raised the first one million, the first harabi that we did. And I took my son. I remember it, it was in 2016 in November, Oops, September. Uh, we, we went to India and the, the surgeon there, uh, I liked the way they treated my son. The welcome was so fine. They even got him some presents so that he feels he felt at home with the toys and all that. And he was taken for, for checkup for his throat so that so that when he gets to theater he won't have complications so the following day we were booked for for theater and the best thing with the surgeon in in india they are very confident they called me the following day they took me to a loom and they told me the procedures that they are going to to undertake to my son and the anesthesia of the same case came and she explained the way she has, she's going to give medication during the surgery. I was so confident with them and I released my son for surgery. They took him to theatre for like, it was two hours I can recall. It was two hours. In fact, when I went back to my room because we were given a, a special room that we used to, 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 to stay with my son, it was a very cool room. I slept. For the first time, I slept like I was a very little girl. I slept. Even when the, my son was out of the theater, the nurse there used to come and say, Clarence, Clarence, because they don't know how to speak English. They just called the name of the patient. And I was like, oh, I'm in the following place. So she, they told me, your son, they are up. Then I went. And I, I found my son, he was not woken, he had not woken up. So I was told to stay there when he was waking up, he can see me. So that he get the confidence of the healing. So I, I sat on the waiting uh, bench and my son woke up. In fact, there they came with the ventilation, you can see the heartbeat and all that. Such that you feel now your son is just asleep he's not dead he's just you can see the heart the way it is pumping and that one gave me courage and when he woke up now the doctor came he explained he showed me the video he took the video during the surgery he told me how he has done it the way he has prepared the the the, the area so that the line can be in that area so my son woke up he was so fatigued by the the do, the, the medicine, the, the theater medicine, and I was happy to see him awake. And he talked to me, and he told me, "Mom, how are you?" I was very happy. I told him, "Now you're out of theater," and he was happy too. So we went down. We were taken down, and we were told we will stay to the hospital for five days so that the dressing can be removed. The very beautiful thing with the Indian bandage. You know the Kenyan bandage, they used, when you sit down, my son used to sit down, the bandage would pop up. But with the Indian, I don't know how they put it, even if he jumps or he, he, he kicks the ball, the bandage won't come back. I was like, when how this bandage was, was taken there. So he told me the following day, to, to tell my son to come out from the bed so that he can play. I asked him, doctor, when I was in Kenya, my, my son used to stay to bed for five days or 14 days without walking so that the area cannot be infected. He told me no. Take him, give him a ball. He, he brought a ball for him to kick. I was like, and the bandage. <laughs> I was so curious of the bandage part because that is now the area that is sensitive. He told me, no, it won't move even an inch. And I was so happy to see him, to see him playing football without the bandage coming out. It was so fixed such that I was just comfortable. I was just relaxing and 
to make the the message clear they used to give him some medicine i don't know what kind of medicine because my son never cried even one night because of pain unlike with kenya the first uh, the first form four days he was in a lot of pain i don't know the the medicine they used but my son never cried during that period and i was happy we waited for the four days and my son got well and he the dress was the bandage was removed and i was shown now the the part now was the the mpaka i told the the the, the doctor when it looked like a crocodile because it was like the the head of a crocodile because they could cut they could cut the penis this side can drop to this side the other side can drop that side and the line you can see the line that was coming from inside the body so that they can create a, 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 a hole on that he told me that is the area that they are going to use for the urethroline so I, i asked him are you going to to use a foreign thing so that you know it's like it's like uh, a straw he told me no because we've used in fact them they also used the cheek the 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 cheek the cheek uh Mama. yes the the cheek meat from here from my son's cheek and he told me that is the best thing to prepare that line reason being so my son was circumcised that part is the one that could have been used that time and it was wasted in in nyeri so they had to use an uh, an option and the next option that they normally take is from the cheek and they told me the cheek is normally elastic as the penis grows it takes growth with it so i was very confident of what they've done with my son and i was very happy i thanked god even i informed my family from kenya what was happening and uh, we were told we have to go for checkup twice so before we go back to kenya so we were booked in for two clinics that we attended and on the 14th day we were released discharged and we went uh, we booked our plane back to Kenya so we were told to go back to get back there after six more months so that the crochet can be made and the line can be straightened up for him to be, to be able to discharge the urine we came back i came back very happy ready but stressed also because i didn't have resources for the next surgery i had to redo another harabe you know the friends that i used to to get money from are still my same friends who would give me money and i would feel i'm like overburdening them so i talked to one of my cousin and my cousin told me eva you have to be strong we are not tired of helping you even if you call us for a, like two more other harabes we we'll still come and back you she told me and because of that fear that you have you have to start the the harabe programs next week the following week so i was like it is too early can we start when he is about three months to to go he, she told me no so that we get the money gradually so that we get the amount that we want so i started the planning about the harabe thing the midgetry and the response was so good people are not tired of helping my son and i was very happy and i appreciate all my friends for coming through for me and my boy i just respect and i feel humbled then the harabe we did the harambe we raised about 800,000 and it was okay because the surgery the whole we used to calculate the plane and the surgery and staying there which was around 750 and i felt it is enough for him to go for the surgery we went for the side back for the surgery in 2017 and july and my son was treated the we we met the the hospital were waiting for us and we were booked in for such theater the following day 
he was taken for shake-up there the shake-ups he had a cough when we were traveling using the plane he had a cough and when we were in in Kenyatta I was told once a child has a cough she can't be taken to theater so I was very cautious I told the doctor there but you know he's coughing and sneezing so he told me we'll put him on medication so that he is able to go to theater tomorrow I asked him are you sure by tomorrow you'll be okay because I was fearing to lose him in India so he told me yeah he will so he was taken and given the new, the nebulizer the nebulizer the one that the, the the kids are normally given well they have a blockage so he was taken in and he was given the medicine and he was brought back and i was told to to look at him so that the following day i can give a report because before he was taken to theater and i tell you by the morning my son was not even having a cold or sneezing i just thanked god because i never wanted to stay in india for long because of the capital and all, the money and all that so he went to theater the, that day theater took just one and a half hours because they closed i i explained they removed the the parts they were like cobbler because they stayed like this so they closed the 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 system the pennies and they stitched the system and now they they discharge the urine using the 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 catheter and they came they brought my son back and they told me to take their care of the catheter for 14 days and I was like pre a pregnant mother waiting for a baby. I was like, God, take care of this, this surgery. Make sure the process has gone out well. Make sure that this is a successful surgery that we've ever had. Because I never wanted a repeat of the same. Because when you read through the internet, you, you, you get that sometimes you get festurous of the rain once the the rain has healed it can break so I, I was praying even for that breakage not to come so the the surgeon came and confirmed the first the, the second day he told me that surgery was successful mama Clarence I was like are you sure doctor yes trust in God and we pray together I was so happy and we, I prayed, I had a team we were praying with, we prayed, we prayed, we played until the 14th day. The 14th day I was telling God, now come and show yourself strong through my son. And when the doctor that was in charge that day came, he told me he wanted to remove the bandage and the, the catheter. I, I told him, it's okay. He told me to give him a lot of water, a lot of a lot of milk so that once he is done with the removing we can see the way he is discharging the urine so i gave him a lot of water and gave, he, he he used to like milk there was an indian milk that he used to buy with bottles he loved it so we used the bottled milk i gave him he drank and when the doctor came he removed the the bandage and he told me once he, he urinated for the first time I take a video because he was, he was going around the wards. So he left me with my son. So I told my son, once you're here, you want to, to urinate kindly, let me know. So that I set the video. So he took a lot of water. He was very cooperative. My son used to be very cooperative. I just thank God for that. He told me, mom, now I can discharge the urine. Hey, I took the phone and I took the view all around just thanking God because the line was at the tip of the penis and that was what I was crying for and I just thank God because he did it for me he did it for my son I just praise him because of hearing my son why am I giving this kind of information I want to encourage mothers, even if your son has a condition, know that it is repairable. There is nothing that is impossible with our God. If my son got healed, your son will also get well. And trust in God and be patient. 
You know, most of the time we are discouraged even by our friends. I remember one time my friend told me I have an issue with my dad. That's why my son is sick. I cried that night. Others told me it was a curse. I just cried knowing very well that I have n no one has ever told me about my son. My, my dad, they normally bought so much well with my son. Even I called him. If he has an issue with my son, he told me, me I have an I don't have any issue with with your son. So I was like, devil can use anybody to discourage you through the process. Just take the few friends that you want to know about the condition, pray with them, those people that you believe and trust in you and your God, so that the process can be very good and uh, very smooth with you. Because once, in fact. When I was taking my son for the third surgery in, in Kenyatta, I never told people from Rokarit. And they blamed me when I didn't do that because I was trying to hide the nakedness of my son. I never wanted people to ask, what is hypospadias? Because people will tell me, wewe umerogwa, mtoto wako umerogwa. I never wanted such words from people or discouragement. That's why I had to put it to myself until the third surgery. That's when they got to know I normally go to Kenyatta for theater. You have to be very wise. Tell the people that are concerned, even if your parents are not understanding the situation, tell God to... to to take over and he will make them understand never get tired of your boy because the process is not easy you can go to the to theater and the surgery can fail that was what i was told in kenyatta that we can go to theater and a surgery can fail so i was ready for a failed surgery or a successful surgery and i used to pray so that the surgery can always be successful but it never be became successful in kenya but what am i trying to tell you i want to tell you in kenya we've through this i was called last year in Kenyatta and she was doing a survey on hypospadias cases that was done in Kenyatta and they wanted to know the progress of the 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 surgeries so i told her i took my son to to india for the last treatments and she was very okay with it and she asked how i uh, i found the surgeries in kenyatta so they are doing their best so that they can get the best results nowadays and i'm telling you in kenya we have surgeons and they can take care of your son's case and they can be well if you want to contact me through the same i would take you to the right surgeons that are doing the cases and the cases are being successful in Kenya. I also wrote a book. It is here with me so that I encourage women that this condition it's a deformity that can be repaired it is not a curse it is not something from the parents it is not them, something from witches it is something that god created and it can be repaired the way other things the, the way other deformities are being repaired it is only that it is in a in a private place a di, uh, 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 it is in a private place that someone can't disclose. But what I'm trying to tell you parents, we can go through it, we can conquer it because our God is faithful. I walked this walk for seven years and I never got tired. I want to encourage you mothers. I want to encourage you guide, guardians. Never get tired of taking your sons for hypospadias uh, treatment because it is possible. And I thank God for that. Yeah, so that is Evelyn's story. I hope you've learned a lot. If you're pregnant with a son, if you have a little boy, if you have nephews, please make sure you pay keen attention to some of the issues that uh, Evelyn talked about. Check your son. Check, check, check thoroughly. When you're changing his diaper, when you're bathing him, just check if everything is in order. And if you don't know what you're supposed to be checking, you have no idea what exactly it is you're supposed to be looking for during the next World well Baby Clinic or during the next uh, appointment with the doctor just tell the clinician or the nurse or you know the doctor please check my son tell me is everything okay is everything in the right place is everything okay 
make sure you do that and also you can share this uh, video with all the mom friends all the parents who have little boys i'm sure they too will benefit from learning about this condition called hypospadias and you see evelyn also raised other issues about um chordy she also talked about undescended testes so that's definitely something that you need to be worried about um otherwise thank you so much for watching and if you haven't subscribed please consider subscribing and otherwise i'll see you in the next video